Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to the lecture series in bioenergy. So, in the last class, we talked about the volatile matters and the fixed carbon. So, today what we will do, we will talk about the ash and the residue levels followed by the alkali metals which are present in it and what are their implications. So, again let us uh, in the slide look at what are the points we have covered in terms of the material properties. So, we have talked about the moisture content, we have talked about the calorific value, we talked about the proportion of fixed carbons and the volatiles and this is where we have talked about the Van Krevelin diagram and everything. Now, today what we will do, we will talk about this ash and residue content and followed by the alkali metal content. Okay. So, this is what we are going to do today. So, before as we do in every class to start off with, I will try to explain what I am going to jot down as the notes. So, when we talk about ash or the residue what it meant. So, say for example, you take a piece of paper take a piece of paper and uh, you burn it. So, what you get is black color ash kind of a stuff. Okay. Now, take the same piece of paper and treat it with uh, say nitric acid or put it in some water, what will you get will be something else. So, depending on how you are treating the biomass. So, here I am considering the paper as the biomass. Depending on how you are treating the biomass, your end product will be different. Okay. So, there is a distinction between ash content or the residue. What are that? We will be distinguishing. Otherwise, many a times what happened, we kind of you know confuse between both of them. But in this lecture, we will clarify what is the ash content and what is the residue content and where these two words have started. Okay. So, to start with, so today's lecture will be on ash slash residue level. Okay. Now, talking about ash, basically the way it works is the chemical breakdown of biofuels by either thermochemical or biochemical processes produce solid residue. Okay. So, say for example, you have something like this is your biomass what has to be processed. Okay. Now, you have two routes, either you convert it and we will be talk in depth about all these things, do not get worried, either you have a thermochemical route of conversion or you have biochemical route of conversion. So, based on that what we produced are after all this conversion what we land up with, we land up with a series of residual masses and these residual masses are the ones which is termed as ash. Okay. or residue. Now, why it is called ash or residue? This is where I am going to come. So, say for, say for example, when you are burning something in air. So, this is one aspect which you have to. So, now say for example, you take the biomass okay, and there is a combustion in air. air and this residue what you get because of the combustion is called ash. 
Okay. So, this is exactly the same thing when I told you, you have a piece of paper and you burn it. In the presence of air, you get all that black cheering left behind, that is, is your ash, ash content. Okay. So, the next thing, coming back again to the slide. Now, if you convert it, instead of doing this route, when you convert in the biochemical routes, okay, during biochemical conversion, this biochemical conversion could be in several ways. Okay. This biochemical conversion leads to the percentage of the solid residue which you get out of it falls under what we call as the residue. Okay. And generally, if you see for the same material, say for example, you have the same material and you follow one route to convert it into ash and you follow another route to convert it into residue. This is by the biochemical route and this is by the thermochemical. T c represents thermochemical route and this is the biochemical route. You will always see during biochemical conversion, the percentage of solid waste or solid residue will be greater than the ash content. This is critical. So, always remember this will be far greater the residue content. Okay. So, when produced by combustion in air, this solid residue is called ash and form a standard measurement parameter for solid and liquid fuels. So, for any kind of solid or liquid fuels, when these are burnt in air is called ash. Okay. The ash content of the biomass affects both handling. So, this ash content decides how we are going to handle the biomass and its processing cost. So, there are three parameters it decides. One, how to handle the biomass, because if you have a lot of ash content which is not good, so you may need to follow a different route how to handle the biomass in terms of its conversion. Okay. Step one. The second parameter what it decides is uh, what will be the processing cost which will be involved in it. And third and important parameter what it will decide is biomass to energy conversion efficiency. Okay. These are the three important thing efficiency, which will be dictated by depending on the ash content. Okay. Now, for a biochemical conversion process, the solid re residue represents a non biodegradable carbon present in the biomass. This residue will be always greater than ash content, we have already talked about it. Okay. So, residue which is generated from the biochemical conversion is far greater than the ash content. Okay, that we have already and this part the residue which is left behind is a non biodegradable product. Okay. This is the non biodegradable carbon which is present there after whatever has been derived out of it. Okay. This residue will be greater than the ash content and because it represent a, so essentially what it is representing is the recalcitrant carbon which cannot be degraded further biologically, but could be burned during thermochemical conversion. Okay. So, whatever you are getting as the residue is basically called recalcitrant carbon and this could be further, this material could be further thermochemically. So, T c 
just remember that this is the thermochemical conversion I am talking about thermochemically you can derive. So, if this is carbon so that brings you to different kind of so you can again break this bond as I was trying to tell you through thermochemical route and you can use this energy. So, if you look at the whole process each one of them are complementing each other there are certain things which are selected because of their water content they are preferred that they should be biochemically converted because again let us take example of say algae when you bring the algae from water it has lot of water content you have to remove the water content and that takes a lot of uh, energy to evaporate the water instead if you do a biochemical conversion to that you derive the useful things still you are left with a huge amount of residue that residue will be devoid of water right. So, that particular residue can be further used for utilization for energy products by thermochemical conversion. So, you are realizing that there are several ways where both these techniques could complement each other ok. Now, coming back what are the some of the challenges what will you face with the ash content and if the ash content is higher what happens ok. So, depending on the magnitude of the ash content the available energy of the fuel is reduced proportionately. So, say for example, your ash content is up. So, automatically your fuel efficiency will be low. Why is it so? Think of it. So, if you go back in the previous class I gave you a very interesting way to look into the matter. You have carbon carbon bond, you have carbon hydrogen bond, you have oxygen carbon bond. So, again try to go back to that diagram. Huh? So, it is something like that you have carbon carbon, you have carbon hydrogen, you have oxygen hydrogen, you have carbon oxygen, you have carbon sulfur and likewise there are so, so many bonds. So, I told you it is basically the summation of all these bond energies which is being given out. So, if you are breaking this bond, breaking this bond, breaking this bond, breaking this bond which is being derived as your energy output ok. Now, here is the catch. I told you the question what I posed in front of you was that if the ash content is higher the fuel efficiency will be lower. What does that mean actually? It means there are several such bonds out here, out here, out here somewhere which are not broken and the bonds which are not broken either takes the form of ash or in the form of residue. So, essentially in order to break those residual bonds you have to give more energy into the system ok. So, it means you put more <coughs> thermochemical some energy into it and then you break them down. So, if for a finite amount of matter your ash content is higher, your ash content is high ok. That means, the amount of energy which will be derived from it will be lower. In other word for per unit matter or say in terms of gram, kilogram, tons whatever you unit you use the amount of energy which will be coming out of it will be lesser as compared to energy efficient material where the energy will be higher and the ash content will be less. So, overall if you have to think you just have to think of a material which is bound by atoms, atoms are attached to each other by n number of bonds you are breaking the bond by providing energy, the energy could be provided in two, three different ways. One way you put <coughs> thermal energy, thermochemical energy or you can do a uh, mostly hydrolysis processes which are done in terms of fermentation or biochemical routes. So, what these are doing or you can do, do even an enzymatic uh, digestion where you are enzymes are going you know chopping off the bonds between those atoms and the energy which is liberated out of it is being fed 
or stored or being used as a form of energy. Okay. So, if any of these processes fails to derive maximum energy out of it, in other words, that is left behind as ash or residue. So, that is what I am trying to tell you. If your ash percentage is higher, it means the fuel efficiency of that particular material is lower. So, one needs to go for ensuring the maximum amount of that material is either burnt out or dissolved in biochemical conversion process. The more they dissolve, the residue percentage is going to go down. The more it burned, the ash percentage is going to go down and the more energy will be liberated out of it. Okay. So, putting this concept together, dependent on the magnitude of the ash content, the available energy of the fuel reduce proportionately. In thermochemical conversion process, the chemical composition of ash can present significant operational problem. So, ash and its problem. Okay. So, what happens is that and especially when you are doing some thermochemical process, thermochemical conversion and if the ash content is fairly high, think of a case study where the ash content is fairly high, there are certain operational problem and what are the operational problems you are going to face? <coughs> operational problems. So, the operational problems are something like this. During the combustion, ash can react and form something like a slag or a liquid phase, react to form a slag and, and they block the processes. So, what happens when there is a thermochemical processes, some of this ash combine together with other reactants and form something called a slag. Okay. And these slag, what is formed, they kind of in a reactor, they kind of deposits and those depositions are not at all helpful. They block all this. So, whenever we talk about the more the concentration of ash. So, th say, say for example, if you think of a situation, car exhaust pipe. So, the residual you have seen the car exhaust or a, a scooter exhaust or something. You see in that exhaust, there are a lot of such carbon getting deposited, okay, which is basically an unburned process, which is essentially what we call as ash or residue which is overweight depending on if it is a fuel cell coming from fuel cell whatever. Okay. So, now those depositions will eventually choke that pipe. Okay. So, that is exactly what happens what we talked about operational problem. So, suppose you have a reactor where you are doing the thermochemical conversion. Now, there is a lot of ash which is formed. So, ash will be mixed up with other ingredients in that reactor and will block the nozzles of the thermoreactor. Okay. So, these are the kind of operational problems which are faced by people when they are converting a material which produces a lot of ash. So, that is very critical when you pick up a material, you have already done your due diligence by going through its uh, conversion process, how much ash it will produce and you may have to realign the reactor, realign the thermochemical converter in such a way that it could handle this high ash concentration and it does not clog the different orifices and different pipes and different outlets and different inlets of that whole reactor. Okay. So, this is very, very critical. So, next in the same line after we have talked about ash, just put it together. So, ash is when you are doing an air combustion, residues are the ones which are formed because of biochemical or fermentation reactor or basically you can call it a wet chemical process of converting a biomass into some form of energy. Okay. These are the two clear cut distinction what we meant by residue and what we meant by ash. Now, what we will do from here we will come to ash content out here. So, 1 person, 4 person likewise. Okay. So, if you look at it though wheat straw has lesser moisture, but, had, but it has higher ash con con content okay, as compared to the wood. Okay, and if you go a little up, so now what we will be move on to is the alkali metal content. Okay. So, 
So, coming to the alkali metal content now. So, whenever we talk about the percentage of alkali metals, so biomass is coming from all different kind of bi biological sources. So, they have all sorts of elements present in them, but the alkali metals are of some major significance for operational reasons. So, the most of the alkali metals what we are what are present in nature are sodium, potassium, magnesium, phosphorus, calcium, okay. you have sulfur residues likewise. So, these have very important consideration for thermochemical conversion process. Okay. They have important consideration for thermochemical conversion. Why is it so? So, these are all kind of you know coming from different kind of biomass sources. Okay. Because these mixed up with ash what we talk about just contains lot of silica or silicon. Okay. So, these alkali metals AM I am just putting AM as alkali metals, alkali metals mixed with the silica present in the ash and they form something like a sticky mobile liquid phase. Okay. Sticky mobile liquid phase and this sticky mobile liquid phase are another operational hazards because they created blockages in the airways of reactors, furnaces and boiler plants, reactors, furnaces and boiler plants. Okay. So, talking about this silica, this is another interesting thing which I did not cover in the ash part. Let me tell you, silica is present intrinsically in most of the plants. There is an intrinsic level of silica, it is an structural element and it is present there along the carbohydrate chains somewhere and it kind of helps in the binding and gives its strength. But at times that silica also comes in heavy amount from the soil where the plants are being derived. Say for example, you are deriving an energy crop from a location where there is a huge concentration of silica in the soil. So, that silica is being coming as an extra. So, you have intrinsic silica, you have extrinsic silica. Okay. So, that silica which is coming as an extra creates a lot of problem in terms of clogging the boiler plants, because that silica which is coming extrinsically is mixing heavily with those alkali metals and create a lot of problems. Okay. Now, this is what is significant for us to know about the alkali metal problems. So, now coming to the last of this point which we have already talked about. We will just briefly touch upon cellulose lignin ratio. Earlier we have talked about it, but we will just so close in. We'll, so, if you look at it in terms of the biodegradability, cellulose has a very high biodegradability. Okay. Degradability whereas this has a low biodegradability as compared to if you compare these two. In terms of the biodegradability, this one is much, much higher than the lignin fraction. Okay. So, cellulose could be directly converted into several kind of product like you know you can convert it into ethanol and several things, but if we have really good technologies 
where you can convert the lignin because lignin con contains represent a potentially large energy source. Why is it so? Think of it again. I told you that whenever we are converting something either the end product will be ash or residues. So, whenever we convert the plants or plant biomass, we are left with a lot of lignin. So, essentially we are unable to break the bonds in the lignin molecules, right. So, those bond energies we fail to tap if some way or other by some technique we could tap those lignin molecules and break their bonding, we can derive a huge amount of energy from it. And as a matter of fact, that is one of the big challenge, how really to degrade because there is huge amount of lignin which is there and it, it is really, really high in energy content. It is just you have to find out a cheaper route by which your energy input here which should be low, E stands for the energy input, your energy input should be low and you should be able to derive the bond energy out of it, okay? derive energy out of it. And lignin potentially represent a large energy source, but challenge is how to hydrolyze or enzymatic route to from lignin to syngas. Okay? We will talk later about the syngas and everything. is tapping this energy in the form of syngas. Okay. So, that brings us to the list what we made in the beginning, the basic parameters what are important. So, the moisture content, calorific value, proportion of fixed carbon versus volatile matters, just add it volatile matters, Vm versus fixed carbon Fc, ash slash residue content, alkali metal content, sodium, potassium, phosphorus, you have sulfur content and you have here the silica and everything and last the cellulose to lignin ratio. So, whenever you get a material the first and foremost thing any biomaterial or any biomass is to evaluate these six parameters. Based on these six parameters, one decides what kind of conversion strategy can be followed, which is our next class where we will be entering into all the conversion strategies depending on. So, this is the most fundamental just like as we did in photosynthesis this is the basic fundamental, this is the most basic fundamental one has to understand. These are simple parameters moisture content, calorific value, proportion of fixed carbon versus volatile, ash residue, alkali metals, cellulose to lignin ratio, but unless otherwise you have the knowledge of these and you optimize that which conversion efficiency or conversion procedure will be the best you will do mistake. Okay? So, read through this thoroughly and make a chart in your mind map or a kind of brain chart that these are the parameters which I always have to look. Any, any material, it could be banana, peels of the banana, peels of uh, oranges, lemon, it could be some debris, but these parameters will remain constant. Okay. I will close in here and the next class will be starting with the, the conversion technologies which is based on these parameters. Thank you.